I, you know, I was in tears. One of my one of my dearest friends sent me this email. He's a really good writer, and he was really describing incredibly eloquently um, what he what he'd suffered from the guy who's in South Africa at the moment who's still alive. And uh, I, I just wept and wept. It just broke my heart. And I, I rang him and I said, "You've you've you've broken my heart." And he said, "Yeah." He said, "But it's been there inside for what is it?" 51 years. When the radio and TV presenter and journalist Nicky Campbell revealed the abuse he and countless other boys suffered at the hands of a teacher at school, he could barely have imagined he'd end up forging a friendship with the abuser's daughter. But that is exactly what's happened. It's the subject of the latest episode of Nicky's podcast, Different with Nicky Campbell, which is available on BBC Sounds. Nicky joins us now. Morning, Nicky. Morning, Callum. Hi, Rosie. How are you doing? Great to speak to you. It's great to have you on. Um, why did you feel it necessary to meet the daughter of your abuser? Well, what happened back in the summer, this is basically how it happened to cut a, a, a longish story uh, short. I came back from work one day and my wife, Tina, was listening to a radio program called In Dark Corners. And she said, hey, listen, um, there's a program on here about um, physical and sexual abuse at your school. Do you want to listen or do you want to kind of not? And I said, I'm, I'm good. So I went upstairs and to, to to my study and I start, I start playing the piano but it started gnawing away at me it was like it's like someone had told the grown-ups at last because something inside you is still nine and ten years old you know and so I rang the journalist the next day and I said I got to tell you about this particular guy at school I saw abusing my friends and his name is and he came right back with the guy's name this is a guy who's currently in South Africa we're working hard to get him extradited um and then I, I spoke about it in the podcast different and then I spoke about it on the radio as well and there was Callum there was just a cascade of stuff mm. from pupils who were there around about that time loads of teachers loads of teachers one guy Keith gave an interview said it was uh, the, the Edinburgh Academy at the time was a, a cesspit of sadism and, and paedophilia it, it was bad and looking back you kind of think how was that allowed to happen and one of the names that came up again and again was this guy Hamish Dawson, who is dead, which is a frustration. But um, loads of people got in touch with me. I mean, they were in tears saying just to hear his name on the radio. He was a physical and sexual abuser and he sexually abused me. And so we spoke about him. And then Alex passed on this email Oof, that had come from his daughter. And Alex said, I'm going to send you an email. His, his, his daughter, Jenny's got in touch. And he said, it's, it's fine. It's fine. I won't tell you anything about it. Just, just read it. Mm. And the first line I saw in it, Callum, was, I also hold my father in contempt. And then I read it. And it was so emotionally eloquent. And we spoke and we spoke and we spoke for hours. And she asked to be put in touch with people that her father had abused. It was she, just an extraordinary reaching out. She was needless to say, estranged from him. She, she had been from, from well before um, his death. And so eventually she said, listen, wh why, don't we, why don't we do a podcast together? Because this is, this is a truth that I think a lot will resonate with a lot of people. Mm. Uh, so that's, that's basically what happened. It's one of the most extraordinary um, conversations I've ever had she is utterly extraordinary and she um because there's been a fair amount about it it's in the Sunday Times today there's a big article but she emailed me this morning and she said um she said this has been a victory for the truth wow it is absolutely astonishing let's hear just 20 seconds or so of the podcast episode this is you Nikki talking to Jenny when I met you just through there I can see um the family resemblance I wondered, I wondered, and I was, I was scared about that. Um, look, I, I can see him. Yeah, I, I can see in photographs, I can see both my parents and me. I don't want to look like my mother. I don't want to look like my father. I don't want their blood in my system. Gosh, even just seeing the, the family resemblance, Nikki, must have been, I don't know, is it, is it ever possible to completely contain feelings of resentment towards the family as a result no. of what he did no so many there are so many families who have this i hate the word evil mm. um hey i'll use it have this evil uh, within and it's not their fault it's you know all that stuff about the sins of the fathers that's all nonsense um this 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 is i mean there are lots of families out there who have 
you know, abusers within those families. And Jenny is absolutely as much of a, we don't say victim, we say survivor, because she truly is a survivor, a survivor of abuse uh, as anyone. Uh, and she's um, just, just an amazing, extraordinary woman. And the number of emails she's had from people who were abused by her father saying, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I mean, all this has opened up uh, when it first came out um, the in the summer. It was just it went crazy for, for, for about three or four weeks. And my phone was just ping, 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 ping all the time and the emails. And it was incredibly intense. But it's been a good thing. It has been a good thing because lots of people have suddenly thought, actually, yes, this is unacceptable. It happened to me and it, it happened to a lot of other people. And this has got to stop. Uh, for you know children now there are children in care homes this is this is happening to now mm -hmm. there needs to be mandatory reporting that's another issue i just want to just want to say just that, that that jenny has done something incredible yeah you also say in the conversation with her that you don't hug anybody because of her father and i wonder if by meeting her and conversing with her you feel like you are able to make progress in areas like that, for example? That's a great question. Um, I hug I hug those I love. Mm. Um, what I'm just about is that kind of that, that social hug. I'm kind of, what's going to happen? Um, uh, my, my sister was talking to me about this. Uh, and uh, obviously, she, she, she sent me a long message the other day. And she said, one day you went to school and we used to play fight and roll around and, and, and have fun. And you, just lost it, you know, you're a huggy little boy. One, she said, literally, one day you went to school and then you you got back from school and you changed completely. Because I remember the incident. I remember the moment. I remember how I thought, is that right? Can that be right? He's a teacher. He must be. He's in a position of authority and power. So if he's doing it, how can it be wrong? And what if I were ever to tell anyone, would I get into trouble? I didn't tell my parents because we were, I was at private school and they couldn't afford it, really. They just prioritized everything. And I felt I would be, I would be letting them down as well. It's very complicated, Calm. It's yeah. very complicated. But yeah, um, I found enough after the interview. Jenny's Jenny was Jenny was kind of the same. And uh, we said, um, listen, I wouldn't say interview, it was a conversation. Um we said, uh, look, look, that was incredible. And I think what you've done is amazing. And I, I, I just felt, we felt we needed to hug each other. And we were hugging each other. And we said, we we hate hugging people. I said, yeah, but this has got to happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What a moment. That is a, that, that, that is a huge, something on the face of it, as simple as a hug, seems to represent in this so much, actually. Mm. But listen, I it happened to me on one occasion. I had physically yeah. abused as well. Some of the guys on the on the WhatsApp group, um, you know, when they got in touch, they had multiple abusers mm. at that school. Friends of mine, I had emails from friends because we'd always referred to it, but albeit obliquely, oh, he was a weirdo. He remember him, I remember him. But I got emails from friends saying, "This is what actually happened to me. I've got to tell you now." And I, I, you know, I was in tears. One of my, one of my dearest friends sent me this email. He's a really good writer, and he was really describing incredibly eloquently um, what he, what he'd suffered from the guy who's in South Africa at the moment, who's still alive. And uh, I, I just wept and wept. It just broke my heart. And I, I rang him and I said, "You've, you've, you've broken my heart." And he said, "Yeah." He said, "But it's been there inside for what is it?" 51 years you know and uh we so it's it's been a kind of bloodletting and it's been good and uh, and also we're on the we're on the there are guys still alive so we're on the march for justice yeah it's an amazing thing that you've done and are doing nikki and it's a real treat to get to speak to you albeit in difficult circumstances but it is remarkable and amazing and profound in so many ways so thank you thanks for joining us this morning and people can hear it on on um BBC Sounds, uh, the podcast different. It's a tough listen, but I, I think it's important and it's on all, all the other um, outlets. Thanks so much, Absolutely. Callum. Not Thanks at all. It's me. our pleasure. Thank you, Nikki. Thanks for joining us. Uh, if you've been affected by anything we've discussed, you can email feedback at times.radio and you will get then suggestions of sources of help and advice uh, in there as well in your inbox. Um, the podcast is different with Nikki Campbell. It's on BBC Sounds. 
And just in the interests of, um, of what we have to do in these situations, here's a statement from Edinburgh Academy, which says, Like any right-minded person, we are appalled by the reports of historic abuse. We continue to work closely with authorities such as Police Scotland and the Scottish Child Abuse Inquiry as they investigate what has happened. They are rightly leading on establishing the facts and what action may need to follow, and we will continue to respect that ongoing process. The well-being of children is at the heart of our school ethos today, and we have robust measures in place to safeguard every student entrusted to our care. Schools should be safe places for children and we encourage anyone who's been the victim of abuse to contact the police. Um, it was wonderful to speak to Nikki today on a, what is a, an, a remarkable and outstanding podcast episode. Uh, a reminder, feedback at times.radio is the email address if you need uh, sources of help and advice.